Hello, everyone. Philip James from the Dr. Thyroid Podcast and also the RFAMD Podcast. Coming to you from Italy, and we're sitting with Dr. Greg Randolph from Harvard Medical School. Hi, how are you? Great, great to see you. And this is an awesome conference because we're talking about thyroid ablation, treating thyroid nodules without surgery. And one thing you presented is patient-centered, how would you say, outcomes that they're desiring that maybe a doctor's not thinking of. Yeah, I think we, uh, during this procedure, we measure the effectiveness of ablation of a thyroid nodule with an ultrasound. So we look at the volumetric reduction based on ablation, which is an objective measure. But it's also important, and our recent global guidelines uh, headed by the American Head and Neck Society with eight other global societies, uh, recommended also including, in addition to ultrasound, some uh, metrics, some measures called patient reported outcomes that uh, center more the outcome on what's meaningful for the patient. And there are two main groups of these, those that measure the symptomatic assessment of the nodule, the sense of the lump in the neck that the patient may have, and also sometimes patients come in with a visual disturbance to the neck, an asymmetric lump in the neck, a cosmetic concern. And so there are patient-reported outcome measures that we recommend in these guidelines that should be included in the patient's follow-up after ablation so that not only do you have the ultrasonographic shrinkage, which is the objective measure, but also you know what is meaningful for the patient. Is that lump still visually present in their neck? Is it back to normal? Do they still have a lump sensation in the neck from the nodule? Is that better? So the inclusion of these patient-centered metrics is a kind of more robust and patient-centered um, set of outcome parameters that we recommend. So Dr. Randolph, if I'm hearing you correctly, sometimes the nodule will be treated. You will call it a success on the ultrasound, but the patient may still be concerned. There still might be a visual yeah. component. It's a, it's a really uh, important point that you bring up that in general, these things all correlate. You know, when the ultrasound shows great shrinkage, generally the cosmetic alteration is better. The symptoms that come from the nodule is better but not always. So for example, I can come in sometimes into the room and be disappointed and say, oh, Mrs. Smith, I ablated your nodule and I didn't get the volumetric shrinkage that I like. And she may jump up and hug me and say, I love the procedure because the lump that I had there is now gone and the sensation of a lump is gone. So, you know, Dr. Randolph, with all due respect, I don't really care about your number. The things that were important to me have been addressed by the ablation. So it just kind of broadens the physician's perspective to be a little bit less paternalistic and a little bit more patient-centered to include what is important to the patient. And make the patient aware that, listen, we'll be treating the nodule, but however, not always, but sometimes the physical side will still look like. Right, right, that then it's not like we snap our fingers and the nodule disappears. Oh. It really is, can we get it small enough with this minimally invasive technique, which is quite safe, to make the patient happier, to fulfill the patient's desires. Now, Dr. Randolph, you're a surgeon. You're at an ablation conference. Not all thyroid surgeons are showing up at ablation conferences. What inspires you to pursue ablation along with your surgical practice? Well, I mean, I'm a surgeon, but first you're a physician, so you, you, know, you endeavor to take care of patients that come to see you. And certainly I'm tuned to be able to take surgical care of them, but I try and do what I think is the best thing for the patient. That often in my practice will include surgery, surgery for cancer, uh, but not always. And so there are many patients where, because the nodule is benign or a malignancy that's a very low stage, small, innocuous cancer, uh, that the option of ablation becomes a very excellent option for some patients. But again, it's really, you have to determine the patient's decision-making phenotype. There are some patients that are presented with a cancer or a benign nodule that are most worried about the nodule, an occult cancer. Could that be a, of harm to them long-term? And that's the source of their concern. But there are others who come in and say, 
I'm okay with following this along. I'm really scared mainly about surgery, you and your white coat and your scalpel. That's the thing that most concerns me. So you have to spend enough time with the patient to get a, a sense of what is important for them. I mean, you have to debrief them as to the medical reality, but then with that, you have to take their lead and find out what's most important for them. And then the treatment decision kind of becomes apparent after that thorough discussion. And me as a patient who had a thyroidectomy that did not go well, uh, I think for me, if I had to do it all over again, and I was gonna select a surgeon, keyword select, in other words, screen, uh, and do my own uh, patient advocacy, and pick a surgeon I felt comfortable with. I think one thing that would give me some assurance is if the surgeon actually offered not only surgery, but ablation, mm -hmm. that there's a variety of tools in the toolbox. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a double-edged sword that I usually tell patients when you have a diagnosis that is not tremendously severe, like a benign nodule or a very small cancer, you get a lot of options. When you have a diagnosis that is more extreme, like a very advanced cancer, the number of options shrinks down. But whenever there are more than one option on the table, I think it's important that the surgeon or the endocrinologist, whoever is seeing the patient prior to therapy, reviews with them each of the available rational options, but then also not be shy about saying what the surgeon feels may be the best option and why. Not like there's an agenda that I'm driving that you have to take this option or that option, but to fairly depict each of the options and say, you know, Mrs. Smith, for you, I think this is the best option. The reason I think that is the cancer is large or it's invasive or there's nodal disease. And for those reasons, I think of these different options, surgery is the best option. What this really comes down to more than anything is simply taking time with the patient you know, giving them time. And for me, I see a patient who may even need surgery or ablation right, a, right away, but I, I'll see them for an initial consultative visit, but then I'll have them come back. I give them a folder. I say, write additional questions that may not be apparent right now in this folder. Come back in a week or so for an additional visit, and we can decide again. That way you can kind of steep on some of the things I've said. You can decide what's most important for you, and together then we can make a decision. Uh, the doctor takes his or her time. The doctor listens. Uh, the doctor uh, shares with the patient all the different options. The doctor uh, tells the patient what he or she think might be best. But ultimately, you're saying, let's make sure the patient has all the information necessary to make their decision that's important to them. And then we support them. Good words, Dr. Randolph. Thank you. Uh, everyone, farewell from TNT in Italy.